What was the stupidest thing you and a friend did together? When I was in high school, a couple of my friends and I decided to drive 24 hours to the Grand Canyon without telling any of our parents. We hiked 20 miles through the canyon on no sleep with only a box of Pop-Tarts and a couple gallons of water to nourish us. We ended up making it out, sleeping at a hotel, and then driving the full 24 hours back the next day. Somehow none of our parents figured it out. Edit, my wife has told me that I left the best part of this story out. Part of the reason that we got away with this, is that when we were questioned about our whereabouts that weekend none of us technically lied. For example, we lost phone connection when we were in the canyon and when we got out I had like 7 missed calls and several texts from my mom. I called her back, and she was, naturally, very upset and worried about me. And asked where we had been and why I didn't answer. My response was that a friend and I were driving around. Not a lie. And that the reason that we couldn't answer because we lost connection while we were hiking. Not a lie. She asked where we were hiking and I told her that we were in some canyon out west, and that I couldn't tell her exactly how to get there. Also not a lie. So I have this story. Me and my best friend wanted to smoke some good OL devil's lettuce back when we were around 16 or so. We had this whole plan of where and when to do it, and where to get munchies right after since we've never done that. Neither of us had ever smoked anything in our entire lives, and we figured we needed to get some practice. We thought about cigarettes, but neither of us liked the smell of it so we passed on that. After hours of trying to figure out what to do we had this brilliant idea. We saw a dry patch of grass on the ground and thought well, it's just a plant too, it's dry and everything so it should work. We grabbed all kinds of paper that we had in our houses, because we didn't even had that, and we spent an entire evening rolling and smoking some good old grass doobies. Sometimes we wonder how is it that we have both managed to get as far as we have in life. An Italian eatery we frequent was rotating specialty dishes for a few weeks at a time. On one fateful day, we dined in and asked for the specialty. The staff insisted we reconsider, as the current specialty was a ghost pepper pizza, a full-sized pizza bathed in some of the spiciest oils man has ever concocted, and with our party of just two, each of us would have need to defeat four slices of fire. Never once to back down from such a challenge, and emboldened by having the other as moral support, my friend and I took on the pizza. For reference, they're spicy, like the typical Tabasco sauce you find at the grocery store, which maxes out at 5,000 Scoville, spiciness, units, and then there's the ghost pepper, which exceeds 1 million. After four slices each, we left the restaurant triumphant, albeit with numb mouths. Shortly thereafter, we discovered that 1 million Scoville units is not just spicy on the tongue. There were multiple rounds in the fight, and no winners. TL, DR ghost pepper pizza for two. This is literally something only an insane person would do, so I virtually never tell this story. But I panic hard before exams, and this was an extreme situation involving a highly competitive prep school, university acceptance, personal slash family drama, etc. I got it in my head that one, if I take this exam, I will bomb, like possibly score a zero, and two, if I bomb this exam, my entire life will be over forever. I absolutely had to get out of this exam. I have a pretty high pain tolerance. And if we had succeeded, then this is where I would tell you to maybe stop reading. In my sleep-deprived panic, I decided the best way to get out of this exam was to break my arm. And I convinced my best friend, who is still my best friend and favorite person on this earth, to break my arm. We blasted Call Me Maybe, a popular song at the time, to mask my probable scream, and we stacked textbooks under one end of my huge wooden bed frame, and we had my arm propped underneath it. Frankly, it should have worked, I have no idea how that wasn't enough, sudden and localized, force slash pressure. The rest of the story is sort of equally fucked, but that's the exciting bit. TLDR, my friend and I tried to break my arm to get out of a final exam. Went to a communist's protest in Spain. Got drugged by two girls that wanted to have a three-way with me. I luckily didn't go with them, because apparently they robbed tourists there. Then we went outside, almost got into a fight with four very small but angry Spaniards. Another fight broke out, the entire group of about 200 people ran away from the cops and I woke up on the pavement in front of our hostel after partying at a different place. My friend woke up on the balcony above me. I'm a homebody punk and my friend is much crustier and more adventurous, and one time he brought me with him as a photographer when he was tagging train cars. He was well versed and forgot that idiot newbies can die because they don't know how to look both ways. Long story short, I almost got hit by a train and lost my phone slash pictures. Ick if it was crushed or what but I dropped it on the tracks when he pulled me out of the way, and it was completely gone when the train had passed. Broke into a house that was unoccupied. It was sort of our meeting place for a while to go get high or have a sleepover with our boyfriends since the house was vacant for more than a year. But the house was eventually sold and we never noticed. 
We managed to break in one more time through one of the bedroom windows to realize with horror that there was a family watching TV in the living room. We had to hide in a tiny coat closet for five hours and pray that nobody would bother to check it because we knew the kind of deep shit we would be in if the family caught us and decided to call the police. It wasn't until the family finally went to sleep that we were able to quietly walk out the front door and then make a run for it. When I was about nine me and a couple of my friends, twin brothers, thought it would be fun to run across the on ramp to the freeway we walked under on our way home from school every day, instead of walking an extra 10 meters to the pedestrian crossing. It was by no means a shortcut, we just thought it would be cooler if we did it. There were trees lining the on ramp so we were completely hidden until we dashed out, so we'd crouch in the bushes until it seemed clear, then ran for it. I guess we thought this was some neat daredevil s. We did this successfully a few times until one day one of my friends won a bit early. Don't know why. Guess he thought it was clear and went for it, right into the path of a car. The driver slammed on his brakes and nearly managed to stop but my friend got hit. The car bumper hit his thigh and he bounced off the hood before hitting the ground. He then immediately got up and sprinted 100m to hide under the bridge where his brother and I caught up with him. He was panicking but seemed unhurt. We all swore never to tell their mom and we continued walking home. A few weeks later I asked if he was okay. I saw them all day every day in school but I guess we just never talked about it. He said he'd had a huge bruise for a few days and confessed everything to his parents and that was the end of it. It wasn't until years later that I wondered how I thought the whole situation was for the driver of the car. Went down to the local Walmart with a friend and met up with a bunch of other kids there by chance. All of a sudden we realized they're shoplifting, and not like tiny bobbles either, they're shoving clothes and electronics down the front of their shirts. My stupid ass friend joins them like it's NBD and I mess myself inside. I'm walking out through the metal detectors like a fucking robot when this big Samoan security guard stops the kids we met up with and for some reason I just keep walking and nobody stopped me. My friend miraculously made it out too and I have no idea how. She's not my friend anymore but in 7th grade me and this girl went walking for miles to a gas station and a boyfriend's house. It was like 2am, both our phones were dead, we were two girls, and we were wearing somewhat revealing outfits. I remember a dude pulled up and offered us a ride. Also I live in a very shady area. Anyways thank god nothing happened to us and I would never do that again. Taken strips of paper and glued them to our fingernails and eyelashes, and put nail polish on the paper strips when already glued on, and this was at school. So every time someone looked at us real quick then did a double take and stare at us, we would laugh our asses off. Only bad part was when the teachers got mad, and it was hard as hell to take them off my eyelashes, almost ripped them out lol. A few weeks after Mardi Gras, senior year of high school, a friend's parents had a boat docked on the coast. That friend, myself, and two other friends visited the boat for a weekend. On Saturday night, we drove a little ways down the beach, had a bonfire, and everyone other than me drank beers. Things were fine for a few hours, until we see a police car heading toward us. We're all underage, the bonfire itself might be illegal on the beach, and we panicked. So we ran. Walked back about 45 minutes to the boat. I think they kept drinking. One of the guys had too much, and vomited black liquid on the carpet in the boat, he's fine, but in hindsight we probably shouldn't have just let him go to sleep. The next day, we went back to retrieve the car. An officer was there waiting. She was extremely understanding, I know what it's like to be young, and let us off with a stern talking to. However, apparently after they looked up the vehicle registration, also, they found a bomb in it. A local police officer in our city contacted that parents of my friend whose car it was, and told him their son was missing, presumed lost at sea. I was about 10 with my brother and my friend and her brother. Shot fireworks out of a wheelbarrow handle and we turned around and an acre of our prairie was on fire. It took all of our fire extinguishers, two or three, and we hooked up four hoses to put it out. I don't think I've ever sprinted so fast in my life and my heart was about to explode from adrenaline. I remember stepping on a cactus in flip-flops and not realizing it until the fire was out I really thought I was going to destroy my home. We ended up putting it out at about 1.5 acres. There was a lovely furrow patch for 5 or so years after that. As beginner hikers, we decided to do the Delta Lake hike around Grand Tetons National Park. 8 hours, several panic attacks and tears later we made it up and down the mountain safely. Death thought we were gonna die while crawling across boulders and climbing up steep inclines. Fuck you to every hiker coming down who told us we were only 10 minute away when it was actually 2 hours for 2 beginners. Would've turned around otherwise for sure. I'm pretty sure I've done things way dumber than what I am getting ready to share, however, this is the only one I can think of offhand. I was about 16 years old. Friend and I walked to the park, just BSing, sat down at the picnic table, found half a joint sitting there, 
Decided to smoke it, not knowing WTF it was or could be laced with. Ended up getting massively stoned, and he decided it would be funny to chase me trying to knock me down so he could write on my face with a ballpoint pen. He caught me, started to try to mark me, and the pen leaked all over my face. We had to then, stoned to S, walk the mile and a half home with my face full of blue ink and him laughing and pointing at me the whole way. We emptied out some of his dad's shotgun shells to get the gunpowder and put it in a small metal bottle. We drilled a hole in the lid and made a tissue paper fuse. We set it in the sand next to the creek that ran through our neighborhood, and I lit it. I ducked behind a tree and waited. And waited. I finally figured that the fuse hadn't worked. As I stepped out from behind the tree, it went off with a huge blast and a gout of flame shot up into the air. We ran like hell. My friend's dad heard the blast 200 yards away, in their house, and immediately thought, my son almost certainly did that. He came out and found us, and dragged his son off to punish him. Never said a word to my parents. So far as I know, they have no idea it ever happened. We checked later, and it had blown a hole straight down through the sand, and the bottom of the hole was glass. 11, 12 years old at the time. Climbing this huge tree to see what kind of view you could get of the city. Made a dare that he couldn't jump from the tree to the nearby telephone pole. He took the dare, jumped from the tree to the wooden pole, sliding down it like a fireman. It was apparently covered in poison ivy. Got back to his house and had to have all of that pink calamine anti-itch lotion put across his arms, legs, and stomach. In the end, everyone else is laughing as he sits there in a pose like cartoon characters in full body casts for the rest of the night. We were 16. Put firecrackers inside some plastic bottles, then decided it was a great idea to put them inside a trash bin. Bin caught fire, shit went down, we had to throw dirt inside it to prevent the fire from growing and igniting a tree whose branches were on top of the bin. Obviously in that moment some people came walking by and started shouting at us how idiotic we were and they were going to call the police on us, and wanted our IDs. We shut down the fire, grabbed our bikes stranger things like, and run the F away from there. This is the most retarded thing I did when I was young. On average I was a pretty chill kid. When I was about 15 me and some friends got stupid high and decided to skateboard off my friend's roof and into the pool. Well after about 20 minutes we decided it wasn't hard enough and someone grabbed a pair of handcuffs. He then tried to skateboard off the second story house into the pool handcuffed. He missed the pool and got stuck in the tree. We couldn't find the key and none of us were strong enough to bend the branch and get him down. We ended up having to call the fire department. We got really lucky that the fire department didn't involve the police or we all would have been in so much trouble. Me and two mates took a couple of tabs of acid each and thought it would be a good idea to break into the local water treatment plant. This sounded like a great idea to our LSD adult brains. Obviously walking was a big enough challenge, but climbing over an 8-foot, barbed wire fence, whilst tripping balls? Well it went as well as you would expect, with one of my friends attached at the arse to an 8-foot barbed wire fence, and his two supportive mates, absolutely pissing themselves with laughter. I'm not sure if this is the stupidest thing I've ever done with mates. But, it will always be one of the funniest. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now, 